Good evening and welcome to our STS-133 mission status briefing. Uh, with us tonight, we're happy again to have the lead flight director for the International Space Station Control Team, Royce Renfrew, and the lead spacewalking officer, Art Thomason, with us. We'll start out as usual with some opening comments from the two gentlemen, and then we'll move on to your questions. Royce? Thanks, sir. So uh, another uh, excellent day on orbit for the 133 ULF-5 team executing the second EVA of the mission. I was I was very pleased at where we got to with this EVA. We we got through all of our nominal activities and and knocked off a whole bunch of get aheads that we were hoping to be able to do on this mission. I'll let Art give you all the all the details of the activities that we did. But uh, I was very pleased with uh, with where the where we got to at the end of the day. Uh, we started out the day a little bit uh, behind the, the schedule because we had a problem with Bowen's suit with a seal in one of his uh, lyo canisters, and we uh, did a quick IFM in the airlock there with Mike Barrett and Paulo, replaced that seal and uh, put that back in, got a good leak check, and got uh, both crew out the door. Uh, it was uh, another outstanding job again by Mike Barrett and, uh, and Scott Kelly operating the arm with uh, Steve Bowen riding it for the majority of the EVA. And uh, we ended the mission with the, uh, or we ended the day rather, with the uh, big arm, the SSRMS in the, uh, in the undock config, which is a real milestone for me because that means we're essentially done with all of the uh, space station robotics for, uh, for this mission. Obviously after uh, Discovery undocks, we still have a couple more surveys to do with the shuttle arm on their way in. But as far as big arm ops are concerned, we're done with that. Uh, we had a little bit of also of a hiccup in the, at the end of the mission with uh, Al Drew's helmet cam. His helmet lights uh, came off the top of his uh, EMU. Uh, we got Steve over there to help try to put that back on. We spent a little bit of time troubleshooting that. We were almost at the end of the activities for both crew anyway, so we made the decision just to tether the helmet, <clears throat> the helmet lights to, to Al's suit and send him back to the airlock while Steve went out to take care of one more get-ahead activity and then we were done with the EVA for the day. But uh, all in all, just a, just a great day on orbit and an excellent EVA uh, too for the, for the entire team. Uh, inside uh, the IVA tasks were still pushing along uh, even while the crew was out executing the EVA. We uh, accomplished all of the tasks that we hope to do today with the IVA crew in the permanent multipurpose module. We essentially cleaned out the aisle way moved all the stuff that was hanging off the front of the rack to its, uh, to its locations where we're temp snowing it, moved a lot of that stuff to the end cone, put it behind the bungee jail there, and also got uh, the, the uh, uh, extra equipment that came up with Robonaut as well as the Robonaut torso in the packing crate it came up in, moved that into the lab. So then tomorrow on orbit, we're going to go take the, uh, the carbon dioxide removal assembly bed that we brought up in, in, uh, in the mid-deck of the orbiter and uh, installed that in the Cedra in the node three rack because of the plus one day that we decided to go ahead and take care of that. And we'll activate the node three Cedra tomorrow afternoon and let it run for the rest of the mission. <clears throat> and then the crew also has a half day off tomorrow, uh, a well-deserved half day off tomorrow and uh, they'll spend some time relaxing with uh, all crew members taking a half day off uh, after their midday meal. So like I said, I'll let Art give you all the details of the activities that we did today. So up to you, Art. Okay, thanks, Royce. Uh, I'd like to start out by congratulating Steve, Al, Nicole, and Mike on another outstanding EVA today. Uh, today's EVA was six hours and 14 minutes in duration. That puts Steve in sixth place on the all-time list for time EVA. Uh, he now has accumulated 47 hours and 18 minutes. Uh, with Al's two EVAs on this mission, he's accumulated 12 hours and 48 minutes. Um, on today's EVA, we had uh, quite a few small tasks, uh, so there's a lot to keep track of, especially with the SSRMS going on again. Um, but the crew, again, did an outstanding job. Uh, the first task was to stow an APFR outside a portable foot restraint. Uh, this restraint was brought in on EVA-1. A heat shield was removed so it could fit in all the worksite interfaces on the outside of station. I uh, was then stowed outside of station for use on future EVAs. Uh, from there, Al headed over to the failed pump module. Uh, he did a quick inspection, inspection on the vent tool and vent tool extender. Uh, everything looked great. Uh, we were concerned before the CVA about a, a kink in the line. He inspected that. Uh, there was no significant damage, so uh, we were go to vent. 
Uh, he then threw the bale on the vent tool, which allowed uh, the 10 pounds of ammonia in the pump module to be vented. Uh, once that was complete, uh, he worked on some troubleshooting for the J1 electrical connector uh, that we had trouble with on EVA1. I was able to get a good mate on that, uh, so no contingency tie-down plan was required. Uh, we're in a good configuration to now bring this pump module home on 135. Uh, from there, Al stowed the vent tool and vent tool extender and a bag that's now stowed on top of the airlock, its nominal home. Uh, Steve, meanwhile, was working on Columbus, uh, where he got on the end of the arm and picked up the lightweight adapter plate assembly, or LAWAPA. Uh, this is part of an experiment that was brought up on 123, uh, now returning home with uh, some of the data that was collected, and uh, now back in the payload bay, thanks to Steve uh, on the arm and uh, Mike running the arm. Uh, from there, Al translated out to the starboard end of the truss, uh, where he removed the Expeca MLI from Express Logistics Carrier Number 4. Um, now that Express Logistics Carrier Number 4 is on station, uh, this piece of this thermal blanket is no longer required. Uh, that was removed. While he was in the area, uh, we had noticed um, earlier in the day that a cover on the camera that they worked on yesterday where they installed the lens uh, had twisted a little bit. Uh, so Al went over there, um, using his hand, was able to uh, turn that cover back into place uh, so the view was no longer obstructed on that camera. Um, from there, uh, Steve continued on the arm. He installed the, a camera on Dexter. Uh, this now completes the outfitting for Dexter. Dexter is equipped with two cameras. Uh, one final task on Dexter was for Steve to remove the EP blanket. Uh, this is an electronics platform blanket that's no longer required. Uh, this was used for launch. And uh, now that SPDM is operational on orbit, uh, this blanket is no longer needed. Uh, from there, Al then removed jettison stowage bags that were left outside uh, on the pump module EVAs uh, when the failed pump module was changed out. Uh, these were used to cover some fluid quick disconnects uh, for thermal protection. Uh, those were then brought back inside. Uh, then Al went back to the airlock. Uh, we had him get an O2 recharge to charge his tanks up uh, to make sure he had plenty of oxygen to complete all the tasks uh, on this EVA. He then headed out to the port side of the truss where he installed the P3 CETA light. Um, this light illuminates the solar alpha rotary joint. Uh, he then headed up and uh, reinstalled a booty uh, that, had come out of, that had come out of place before. Uh, we anticipated that the Velcro may be bad due to atomic oxygen, but Al was able to uh, reconnect the Velcro and he did not have to put any uh, extra restraints on it to keep it in place. Uh, from there, Al went on to uh, do some troubleshooting on the P1 radiator grapple stow beams. Uh, these beams stow a grapple fixture that's used to hold the radiator in case it needs to be removed and replaced someday. Um, these beams were installed on an earlier mission and they weren't as secure as we had liked. Uh, Al went through a series of troubleshooting steps, uh, but in the end it turned out that by applying higher torque he was able to get the beams nice and secure. Uh, from there, Al translated over to node 3 where he removed a thermal insulation blanket, uh, also no longer required. Uh, Steve then translated to Dexter and to the POA, and this is a POA is an end effector that's up on the mobile transporter. Uh, in both of those locations, he installed lens covers uh, that protect these cameras from the plume of visiting vehicles. Uh, from there, Steve worked a couple of get-aheads. He removed a portable foot restraint, put it in a location that's um, preferable for a future mission. Um, he then headed out to uh, the Strela adapter. Uh, this is a, a Russian tool that's relocated from PMA3 over back to the Russian segment. And about that time, uh, when Al was finishing up removing uh, the uh, thermal blanket from node 3, uh, he did have the issue that Royce had mentioned where uh, his WVS or wireless video system and helmet lights uh, became disconnected. It was still connected uh, via the power cable. So Steve tried to go over there, get it secured into place. Uh, it's something that's extremely difficult to do in the bulky EVA gloves. Uh, at that point, Al tethered it back and uh, we had completed all of our nominal tasks and then some at that point. Al translated back to the airlock. Uh, we got him in a good configuration. Uh, Steve finished up by installing the Strela adapter over on the Russian segment, grabbed a bag, and both crew members headed in uh, for another great EVA. And with that, I'll turn it back over to the moderator for questions.
Thanks a lot, Art. Uh, so we'll start here at Johnson Space Center. Please remember to state your name and affiliation before your question. And we do have one reporter on the phone bridge as well. So uh, start off with Mark. Hey, thank you very much, uh, Mark Corot, for Aviation Week and Space Technology. Could you sort of uh, update us on the Russian CO2 uh, repair work and kind of where they stand and whether um, that plus the CEDRA operation would have any impact on the extra day as you see it now? Okay, let me uh, let me answer the second question first. Uh, the <clears throat> the Russian uh, a piece of equipment called Vazduk, which is a, uh, essentially a piece of hardware that scrubs CO2 out of the breathable atmosphere, like our carbon carbon dioxide removal assembly, the CEDRA we keep talking about. So the, our Russian friends, the cosmonauts, have been in the in the service module for the last couple of days, going through a rather extensive. Uh, uh, in-flight maintenance activity on on Vazduk, and uh, they accomplished all of their tasks today. And uh, it is my expectation that tomorrow we'll be able to get uh, Vazduk back up and running. Hopefully, it's just about the same time as we get uh, uh, Cedra in uh, Node 3 up and running. So we'll have uh, all of the CO2 scrubbing capability of the ISS stack going at the same time. If for whatever reason we can't get uh, uh, Vazduk up and running, or if we have problems getting the Node 3 Cedar up and running, that will not actually impact uh, the plus one day at all. We, we've mar uh, plotted it out. We've got plenty of margin for being able to scrub CO2 using the shuttle assets and using uh, the lab Cedra. We're also using the Medox uh, containers in the airlock that the crew normally uses when they're in their EVA camp out the night before an EVA when they're when they're secluded from the rest of the station. We have two Medox canisters in there that scrub the atmosphere for that volume. And what we've been doing in the interim here while the airlock hatch is opening is we've inserted Medox canisters in that scrubber to help scrub the ISS atmosphere as well. And then on top of that, we have uh, LIO canisters that we can use in the Russian segment, and we have LIO canisters that we can use in the U.S. segment if we need to, but we shouldn't. Uh, so the, the whether or not Vazduk comes up or whether or not we get Cedar up or not won't, won't actually affect our ability to do an, uh, the plus one day. Okay. More questions? Bill? Yeah, Bill Hart with CBS for uh, Royce. Just another Vazduk question. Um, I, I thought you all they were going to replace that with some hardware that's uh, – what, what is the long-term plan for Vazduk? I know they spent quite a bit of time trying to get this thing running. Um, I, I actually don't know. I, well, I'll have to go look that one up for you. What uh, what they're doing now with uh, with Oleg and Alex uh, is specifically what they've been trained to do, which is essentially uh, what we're going to do with the Node 3 Cedra as far as – it's not a one-for-one -one comparison because they're obviously different hardware, but they're, getting, they're essentially working, doing an IFM to work on the pump, and they're also trying to bring up another bed in that to increase its efficiency. Uh, as far as replacing Vazduk, I, I'll, I'll have to look that up for you because I'm not sure what that actually, what the plans are there. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, just looking ahead, can you uh, update us on where Discovery is with consumables? I know that you've already added a day. Are you, is there any chance you'd be looking at another mission extension, another plus one? Um, as far as the consumables on Discovery, and I, I th you, you guys keep asking me questions, and I think oh, I should have stopped and asked that question when I, before I came over. I know I know Discovery has plenty of consumables for the plus one mission, plus the EOM plus two that we normally keep for being able to deal with uh, weather at KSC, and beyond that, I would not be able to tell you what the consumable status on on Discovery is. I, I'd have to. I don't. I don't want to get quote numbers and then get them wrong. So I'll have to get that number for you. Okay, but uh, is is there any talk amongst the team about another extension for for any reason in terms of staying at the station longer? You know, we, we always try to protect for any docked cases that we might need to go do, but as far as an additional plus one day, there's been some conversation, but I haven't, I was busy with my EVA today and I haven't tracked where that all got and whether or not we would add another dock day to the mission, I'm not sure. Gina. Uh, Gina Sinceri, ABC News. I was curious about Steve's camera. I think he went out the door with it not working and then it suddenly started working. Is any clue to what the issue was? 
Yeah, that's something we're still scratching our head about. Um, this, we had the same signature on EVA1, uh, his wireless video system. Um, didn't work for the beginning, and we did all the troubleshooting steps that we could think of, and then magically it started working again uh, around two hours into the EVA, and uh, we had the same scenario today. Uh, so not exactly sure what happened there, but uh, something we're looking into. Thank you. Anything else here in Houston? <coughs> well, just to follow up on, uh, on Robert's question, Royce, if, if you did get a day, uh, I'm assuming you could put that to good use with PMM uh, unloading and outfitting. I mean, that, I would assume that would be what you would use an extra day for if you got one. Yes, absolutely. If if we if if that came to pass, we would essentially use it for the same thing we've used the plus one day that's been added to the mission for. We would continue to transfer uh, hardware out of the permanent uh, multi-purpose module into the lab, strip it out of its containers, get the, get all that uh, into the HTV. So yes, that that's what we would use it for. I'm going to go to the phone bridge now, and uh, we'll see if Marsha has a question. Marsha, can we hear you? Yes. Hi. I've got two questions. Um, the Cedra in Node 3, um, I, I can't remember why it's down to begin with. Uh, could you refresh my memory? The, uh, the Node 3 Cedra, uh, has, all of the Cedras actually have uh, the carbon dioxide removal beds in them. Um, the ones in the Node 3 Cedra are what we call a Dash 2 bed, and the, the one that we brought up in the mid-deck on this mission is a Dash 3 bed, and it's really just an upgrade. But the, uh, the, the Dash 2 beds are uh, getting close to their uh, 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 time on orbit when we track those things, and they're just like canisters that you have to change out after you've used them considerably. So the Node 3 Cedra has, uh, we were intending to bring up a Dash 3 bed and insert it into the Node 3 Cedra after the 133 mission, and then 134 was bringing up another Dash 3 bed, and we were going to put that one in there as well. Uh, so what we'll wind up doing tomorrow is we'll go ahead and insert the Dash 3 bed that we brought up in 133 into the Node 3 Cedra and run it with a Dash 3 bed and a Dash 2 bed uh, to get that up and running uh, tomorrow. But there, there's actually nothing wrong with it, and there's nothing wrong with the bed other than it's uh, it's approaching the time when we should ought to change it out. We'll go ahead and get that uh, running tomorrow and uh, leave, probably leave it running until the end of the mission. Great. Thanks for that explanation. And, and now that the second spacewalk is over, um, do you feel like most of the major things have been accomplished on the shuttle mission in that um, it's all downhill from now, so to speak. Uh, I feel happy and contented, actually. I'm a happy flight director. Uh, all of our big objectives for the mission have been accomplished. We've installed the ELC. We've installed the PMM and activated it yesterday. That was, that was beautiful to watch all the robotics and all the, all the structures and mechanisms and the outfitting and the vestibule outfitting. And that was just great. I loved all that. And then two days ago, we conducted the first EVA, and that was flawless. Today, we conducted the second EVA of the mission, and it was flawless. And we got a whole bunch of get-aheads. And I, I was very happy about that. Uh, the, the remainder of the mission, however, is just as important as all the stuff we've done, especially with the addition of the plus one day to the mission here to try to get the ISS in the best possible configuration we can get it in. Uh, before we uh, 133 has to leave, and then HTV has to leave right after that. So we still have a, we have a lot of work to do in front of us. It's conceivably not as uh, glamorous as installing modules and ELCs and doing spacewalks, but it is absolutely just as important to do all of those activities that are coming up, uh, coming up for the remainder of the 133 docked mission. Thank you. That's all. Okay. Do we have any further questions here, Bill? <laughs> a very quick one for Royce. Um, at the end of the CVA, you called uh, Scott and had a little private talk. I don't suppose you'd tell us what that was about. Sure. Uh, I just actually wanted to tag up with my commander because we've been so busy. <laughs> we've been so busy recently, I haven't had a chance to talk to him. And, and uh, I thought this was just a good opportunity where we're getting the crew out of their uh, EMUs and everybody was uh, pretty much coming into some downtime, and I just took the opportunity to commandeer the space ground so I could chat with him for a little while, just ask him how everything was going, let him know how happy I was, how the mission was going, and, and he was he was very happy as well, and 
and uh, he was excited that the mission was going as well as it was. And that was really just, uh, you know, I, the increment lead flight director, Mike Lammers, talks to him every every week. They have a sit down conversation that I've been going to uh, leading up to the mission here for quite a while now, so I can stay tagged up with the ISS commander. And I just, we literally hadn't had a chance to talk to him in a while, so I, I commandeered the space ground and, and just chatted with him for a few minutes. One more question from Ralph. Hi, Robert Perlman again uh, with CollectSpace.com for Art. Uh, just um, because there was the, a lot of these activities were, were categorized as get-aheads for today, uh, I'm just curious with the shuttle program coming to an end, how long is the list of get-aheads that remain um, that uh, are outstanding and uh, are you near completion on that? I don't have an exact number for you right now, but uh, we definitely are whittling the list down and uh, it's, it's getting much smaller uh, with really one more shuttle flight full of EVAs left. Um, I'm sure there's always going to be a list that's it ha not zero, but uh, we're definitely making some progress. Okay. Any further questions here? Okay. With that, uh, we'll uh, wrap up this uh, briefing. Uh, a few programming highlights. Uh, of course, the uh, space station crew and the shuttle crew getting ready to go to bed. The station crew was supposed to go to bed at uh, 6.53 and the shuttle crew at 7.23 p.m. this evening Central Time. Our flight deck highlights are coming up at 8 p.m. Central, and then we'll have the uh, International Space Station Flight Director update at 12.45 a.m. for those of you who want to stay up that late. And then uh, the Discovery and Station crew are going to wake up at 3.23 a.m. and begin uh, a half day of activities before they get some R&R uh, &R time. With that, uh, we'll close out today's briefing. Thank you for being here, and uh, we'll go back to Mission Control.